The institute has introduced a hybrid of eucalyptus tree that is quick, maturing, and commercial viable for growing. It is called Clono eucalyptus, locally known as Karitunsi. This tree provides firewood, poles for building, and both commercial and domestic electricity transmission poles. A nursery and mother garden exist at the institute for multiplication of seedlings. Simon Ogwal, a researcher at Nafori, says the tree has a lot of benefits that should be utilized. This is eucalyptus hybrid brought from South Africa in 2001. These trees have exceptional growth. They can be, they are very fast growing compared to our ordinary eucalyptus that is available in Uganda. Depending on the use, these trees can be harvested from six months up to 12 years. If you want it for firewood, you will start harvesting at six months. If you want it for scaffolding poles for building, you will have it at six to eight months. But most uses in Uganda, as we speak, is for electricity transmission poles. In a well-managed plantation, you should be able to harvest a eucalyptus pole for electricity transmission at six to seven years. Domestic transmission. If you want it for three-phase transmission of electricity, you give it up to eight years. The important thing is to buy the right clone for the right geographical site and manage it very well. You will not go wrong. For you to maximize a lot of benefits from this tree, space the plants at 3 by 3 meters. Why eucalyptus hybrids? Hybrids are two individuals. It is, it is an individual brought together from two individuals. That's why you hear me saying GC and GU. In the G and C, G was the mother. They crossed the pollen of G with those from C and got what we call a GC. They are very important attributes. One individual contributes to the hybrid and this one also contributes to the hybrid, making it superior than either of the parents. So, if you compare this with just the grandis that we grow in Uganda, this is much more superior. They are straight, they have less branches, they are very cylindrical, that is where they are ideal for umeme transmission poles. It is the same size at the bottom and at the top. That's why we advise people, plant at 3 meters by 3, allow them to compete for height, get what we need for the height, thin them and they will become bigger. That is it. International trade statistics show that the demand for timber and wood-based products in Uganda is very high and cannot be satisfied with the resources available internally. The notable exception is poles. Ogwal emphasizes that this eucalyptus will go a long way to provide poles and income for the citizens. When they brought these clones into this country, they conducted what we call an agroecological agro marching. They did it in 12 sites across the country. And through repeated assessment and collection of data, the institute was able to match a particular set of clones for a particular part of the country. So, when you come to us, we will ask you the first thing, where are you going to grow these clones? Once we are certain, we now tell you, according to our performance trials, the best clone for your area is this. If it is available in stock, we will tell you, please go. It's not only enough to tell you go, we even give you the technical advice. What is the spacing? How do you do fertility? How do you do management? every two years, four years. You have to come back to us because you have established a relationship with us. Do not disappear after planting because you will make mistakes along the way and you will not get the magic six to eight, months, eight years that we've talked about. How does one plant this tree? 
If you are planting in a place where cattle rearing has been practiced before, first cultivate the area to soften the hard soil. After planting, how should one look after the tree? Like any other plant, eucalyptus hybrid requires practices that facilitate quick growth and smooth maturing. The first two years, we advise our clients, weed your tree like you are weeding beans. They are very poor competitors. Once you leave them in weeds, they will shut down their growth because they cannot compete. That is one thing you should do. Number two, termites. As much as possible, destroy the termite mounds before planting. And then at the time of planting, you drench around each tree. You will have given them some lifeline to be able to compete. Drenching is uh, making the soil around the plant wet with a chemical that is able to destroy the what? The termites that are attacking. Once the smell is there, they should be able to repel them. For those that are daring enough, they should be able to die once they taste the chemical. Depending on what is on the market, but I have found uh, some people using tamido and uh, kohino. Kohino has been very good for some of the people we have referred to. It is expensive, but clients should understand. Look at the value of your tree eight years from now. It is cheap to buy the tree, but it's very expensive to maintain. If you have no spine, you have no business being in what? In forestry. You must be able to wait for six, eight, twelve years for that tree to grow. It has come to our knowledge that there are very many nursery operators out there. Some of whom are genuine, some of whom are fake. They are selling seedlings to the public, lying to them that what they have is grown eucalyptus from South Africa. Please be advised that a seedling that has been got from clonal eucalyptus has this bend. It must have this bend where the previous leaf was when it was still in the mother garden. If it does not have this bend, you are not buying clonal eucalyptus. You are buying seed. Seedling produced from seed. This one is produced from cuttings. That is why I was explaining that you must bury this below the ground. Ask that person telling to you, where is this bent part? So that you can bury it up to this point. Okay? That is a proper seedling. The right one. Always consult the institute who shall tell you that that is the one. Take photos. WhatsApp is available. Share it with the technical people. They will tell you. This is the right one. It must have this bend, I insist. The myth that clonal eucalyptus does not grow again after harvesting is collected here. It is able to grow again. The technical term for that is coppicing. As you look at this plant, we allowed this tree to grow up to eight months. After eight months, we cut it one foot above the ground. These are the ones you're asking about, the coppices. These are the ones. It is able to regrow. It is this property about eucalyptus that we are taking advantage of to multiply and produce more seedlings for the people to buy. If it was not able to do this, we would be not be bothering even to multiply. So these are the ones which you see growing even in a plantation. However, we advise that when you cut down your plantation at six years, do what we call clear felling, clear all of them and replant afresh. If you leave one stump, see, previously it was one, eating from one resource, the soil, now they are six. They have to share whatever is remaining there. They will not exhibit the same excellent growth compared to when it was one. This technology does not use seeds 
but cuttings, as Ogwal explains. This is what we call a mother garden. This technology does not use seeds. We use cuttings. We pick these every fortnight. Cut them, put them in a bucket, and go and convert them into a tree within a period of one month. A month later, when they are conditioned for the field, we sell them to the clients. Depending on the prevailing circumstances, we also respond to forces of demand and supply. Currently, as an institute, we are selling them at 500 shillings. If you want to have your own clono hybrid nursery, follow this. What we are looking at here is a low cost technology called non misting chamber. After the coppices, the branches you saw there, we bring them here and insert one cutting in each pot of soil. Before we insert it in here, we dip the end of that cutting in a rooting hormone to induce roots within two weeks. We cover with a, left, a, a white polythene to allow light, 50% of the light to come inside here. There is a humidity which is built because it has been covered, up to 90% humidity and a very good temperature. Those conditions make it very ideal for development of roots. This technology is cheap. You don't need sophistication of ministers. Anyone in any place, once he knows how to use it and has a good mother garden, can adopt the technology. Okay? So, how do we know it has rooted? We pull out and we check at the bottom. Here you are. A root has come out. We do not pull them out immediately. We check if they are roots, they are tender, they are like a baby who has just been on breast milk. We open the polythene early in the morning. When the sun is too hot, we put back. We start conditioning them to the realities of field conditions. Then we pull them out and take. These buckets here are intended to increase the humidity inside here so that it is really moist inside here. We don't lose a lot once it is humid. One month covered with this polythene. After the month has elapsed, we open every day for the next seven days. Then we remove them and take them to the hardening section. This is the rooting section of the process of producing these cuttings. We do very minimum watering, very minimum. If you put too much water, you are creating conditions for fungal attack, so you avoid it as much as possible. We use a rooting substrate of red soil next to the sand. Rooting substrate is where the rooting takes place. There are so many that are available, but as an institute we are using that. It is cheap and available. In advanced economies, they are using cocoa peat, they are using crushed pine bark, uh, they are even using palm, but here, after one month in the nursery bed, the plants are taken out for hardening before farmers take them to the field for planting. After a month, they are not ready. This one, if you take to the field after a month, it is going to die. The roots are not developed enough. Okay, We now take them outside give them the harsh conditions and they regulate the moisture that is watering and regulate the fertilization. We can either do what we call fatigation where we put granules or we do fertilization where we use uh, liquid water-based soluble fertilizers applied on the, on the leaves. Yes. They must be conditioned first because if a customer, a client takes it and the conditions in the field change all of a sudden. These are not ready for those conditions. But the one which has been with us for a month will stay for another one week as it waits for the rain to come. Yes, 
that way you get value for your money when you come and buy from us as an afford Each tree in this country has its own benefits. It's upon you, the farmer, to pick out what you think will benefit you. Dr. Agaba concludes that each tree